Reincarnation of the Strongest Sword God Written by Lucky Old Cat Chapter 14 Extraordinary Player's Physique The simultaneous attacks from the three assassins caused a lot of damage to Blackie. Even though he wore several pieces of common cloth armor, he had still lost nearly half of his HP. System Guild Shadow has attacked your party. All party members are allowed to attack members of Guild Shadow without penalty. Duration of one hour. I'll fight you guys. Blackie knew he was sure to die. His speed was not comparable with an assassin's. However, he also wanted to retaliate before he died. Blackie started chanting a curse, firing a dark arrow towards Quiet Wolf at zero distance. Quiet Wolf smiled in disdain. Although the arrow was unavoidable, he still had 80 HP at level zero. How strong could a Cursemancer's attack be? Could it possibly instant kill him? Hong, the dark arrow hit Quiet Wolf. A damage of 76 points appeared above Quiet Wolf's head, instantly leaving him with only some leftover HP. Quiet Wolf immediately became dumbfounded after seeing such damage, his eyes nearly popping out of their sockets. The other two assassins were equally shocked. How is this even a cursement, sir? This was just a cannon. The person who dealt the damage was also shocked. Blackie had never imagined that the level 3 Dark Arrow would be so powerful. In reality, however, it wasn't just the level 3 Dark Arrows taking effect. There was also the high damage Blackwood Staff, the aura effect of Might of A Thousand, and the bonus damage from level suppression. Such extreme damage was only possible with all these added together. Crap, let's kill him, brothers. His staff is definitely a mysterious iron equipment. As a veteran gamer, Quiet Wolf quickly reacted, revealing his greed towards Blackie's weapon. Blackie being able to deal such a high damage was definitely due to a mysterious iron weapon. Otherwise, he wouldn't be able to nearly instant kill Quiet Wolf. Suddenly, the other two assassins became full of energy as they rushed towards Blackie. Not to mention a mysterious iron weapon, they didn't even have a common weapon. If they could get Blackie's mysterious iron weapon, then they would profit beautifully. The three assassins attacked again, leaving Blackie with only six HP remaining. When they saw that Blackie was about to die, the three assassins became even more excited. The mysterious iron weapon was about to come into their hands. At this moment, with unbelievable movement methods, Sure Fong appeared in front, blocking Blackie. Three sword strikes blocked the attacks from the three assassins, creating three sparks. All three assassins were sent flying backward. Before the assassins could get over their shock, streaks of thunder appeared within their vision. Three streaks of thunder struck the assassins that were still floating in midair. Damages of 32, 41, 50 appeared on all three of their heads, all of their HP dropping to zero. Their bodies turned into starlight and disappeared within an instant. Because assassins had low defense and were under level suppression, the effect of a level two thundering flash was extremely horrifying. Brother Fong, Blackie became dumbfounded as he looked at Shurfeng's back, dumbly saying, Are you Brother Fong? Everything had happened all too quickly. Sure Fong had suddenly appeared and swung his sword three times, blocking three attacks from different directions. Then, he had followed it up with a thundering flash. All of these actions had been carried out within an instant. It was so fast that the assassins could not even react. Sure Fang's actions and reactions were just inhuman. If Blackie wasn't familiar with the Sure Fong in front of him, he might have even thought it was someone else pretending to be Sure Fong. After sweeping his gaze around, Sure Fong discovered eight players surrounding them. Leading these players was Flaming Tiger. Sure Fong no longer dared to stay behind, hurriedly saying, Why are you still in a daze? Let's go. Sure Fong had activated fast and nimble, completely releasing his body's degree of freedom. However, even though he had a constitution that could keep up and react to his thoughts, his actual body's attributes were too low. He had a very hard time controlling his body, and it was also mentally taxing. Taking explosive maneuvers two to three times was still possible, but doing it long term was definitely too much. The enemies also consisted of numerous healers and jobs that equipped plate armor. 
Sure Fong and Blackie's only choice now was to run away. Blackie continuously nodded his head. Everyone go at them. You must definitely get me my bronze equipment and take over this mine. Flaming Tiger licked the corner of his lips. He was extremely excited. He did not mind the death of the three assassins at all. Originally, Flaming Tiger was still burning with rage. They had spent hours at Dark Moon Valley searching for Sher Fong and his partner, causing their leveling speed to fall greatly. However, they had accidentally discovered Sher Fong and Blackie grinding monsters. At first, Flaming Tiger had wanted to immediately surround and kill the two. However, when he saw Blackie utilizing the smoke cloud at the cave's entrance to kill the level 4 kobolds, Flaming Tiger nearly died from excitement. His hatred towards Shurfong had also reduced by a large half. He had even wanted to thank Shurfong for giving him such a valuable location. The difficulty of killing monsters of a higher level was famously known. If he could kill level 4 monsters without any harm, then his leveling speed would be absolutely horrifying. It won't be more than 10 hours before he would be leading the other players. After he had gained a huge advantage over others, the task of uniting Red Leaf Town would be at his fingertips. When that time came, he might even become Shadow Workshop's captain. Countless virtual game companies had closed shop because of God's Domain's opening. There were billions of players joining God's Domain. To obtain their share in this, Many enterprises and financial groups started investing in God's domain, one after the other. God's domain could be said to be the most profitable virtual game in the world. Flaming Tiger thought about how he would be able to stand out in Red Leaf Town. He thought about forcefully taking the large guilds down a peg. He also thought about becoming Shadow's captain. When that time came, obtaining expensive cars, beautiful ladies, and luxury mansions were only a matter of time. When Flaming Tiger thought of these things, he became unspeakably excited. He had to appreciate Sher Fong for giving all of these things to him. However, appreciation remained just appreciation. He still couldn't let the bronze equipment on Sher Fong and Blackie go. Brother Tiger, those two are too fast. We can't catch up to them. A berserker said, they're lucky that they run fast. However, this precious piece of land is enough. Flaming Tiger's eyes shone when he looked at the mine. He had already fantasized himself leading Red Leaf Town with Flare. Brother Tiger, what about Quiet Wolf and the other two? The three of them fell back to level zero. They also lost quite a lot of skill proficiency, an elementalist asked. Flaming Tiger rolled his eyes at his subordinate, asking, Is this even a problem? You saw as well just now. The kobolds within the smoke cloud won't attack players if they're attacked from a distance. Those are level 4 monsters. Leveling will be easy, so hurry them over here. Brother Tiger is still the smart one. Being able to find such a precious spot, Brother Tiger will definitely become the number one person in shadow. The elementalists started bootlicking Flaming Tiger. Scram. Number one person in shadow? I am the number one person in God's domain. Flaming Tiger angrily responded. The other members of Shadow also agreed, one after another, laughing at the Elementalist for licking on the wrong boot. A moment later, three mage players started attacking from a distance. As for the other players, they lured the monsters into the smoke cloud. Under Flaming Tiger's command, they started killing the kobolds in an orderly manner. Great. This is just great. Even after sharing a Kobold's EXP with so many people, my experience still increased by 2%. Brother Tiger, this is really fantastic. These monsters also drop or and a lot of money. Not only that, but these Kobolds also respawn quickly. We can grind here without limits until we reach level 6. By that time, we Shadow will definitely become Red Leaf Town's number one guild. The members of Shadow started laughing happily. It wouldn't take many hours before every one of them reached level 6. It was already great just imagining how they would suppress the other guilds in Red Leaf Town. Ha ha ha. Consider yourselves lucky for following me. The other team leaders are nothing. When the time comes, I'll become Shadow's captain. Flaming Tiger was in a great mood. With such an increase in experience, it wouldn't take an hour before he rose to level 2. 
compensating for his previous losses. Meanwhile, at the nearby location of Crimson Star Mine, Blackie was grinding his teeth in anger. Brother Fong, are we just going to let this go? That was hard to obtain information that came from a beta tester, but now it's just profiting these people. I get angry just from thinking about it. These people from Shadow are just shameless. Fortunately, I didn't join them. Sure Fong shook his head as he looked at the system panel's clock, smiling indifferently. They dare to steal my things. We'll let them enjoy it for now. In a moment, we'll let them know after happiness comes sorrow.